Hello and welcome to my second video on image processing and analysis using Microsoft Excel. My name is Dr. Peter Akunlabi and I am an assistant professor of agricultural systems technology um, at, at Arkansas State University College of Agriculture, Engineering and Technology. Um, in my previous video, I introduced the RGB to X software um, which extracts the RGB data from um, image files um, and makes them available in Excel. Um, in this video, I will show you um, how to visualize the data once you have it in Excel and um, how to also, uh, also how to modify the, um, the um, image um, chart to um, enhance the image representation. Let's start by going to the folder uh, we that we extracted our data into um, in the in the last video. So here are three uh, five images with corresponding um, Excel files that contain the RGB data extracted from these images. Um, notice that the images, the image name and the Excel, uh, the image file name and the Excel file names are the same. So that you can um, you can easily um, match the data to the um, to the image. Let's open the the file. Um, go back to the the R data, which is a ray data. Remember that we do not have any um, anything in this worksheet. Sheet one is a default worksheet that um, Excel would create, and then we have the data um, containing uh, worksheet uh, RG and be representing the red, green, and blue de um, data. And then here you have um, you have the um, UC data, which represents which is the RG and B data. Only that here the it has been yeah, each of the data sets have been um, collapsed into into uh, a single column so one dimensional data okay so um, here um, in here is a R data and it is a two dimensional data um, the G and the, and the B are similar um, let's start with the R data whatever we do with our data we can do with the G and the B data and then in a later video I would show you how to um, probably in this video I'll show you how to work with the UC data okay so once you you create your um, your data you extract your data this data is selected it's selected to the extent of the data so here you go everything is selected so it makes things easy to start with but I would say scroll and make sure that um, the the first cell that is a1 is showing um, that will make things easy for you as you go um, we we'll move forward um, you will notice that that is um, actually um, going to help um, things um, make things easier for you all right so we once we have the data selected um, to visualize, um, go to um, Insert, click on Insert up here, and um, move to Charts, Charts. And um, on this um, small icon in this corner, lower right corner, um, you click to see all charts. Um, there are no recommended charts um, in this particular selection. Um, go to all charts and then you have different types of charts here what we are interested in here is the surface charts here is a surface chart and um, the surface chart would give you um, 3d surface we have um, a wireframe 3d let us show oh, it's taking some time okay now um, yeah, the wireframe 
3D. Um, I'll tell you about that. Um, there are two wireframe um, yeah, charts. Those are not very good for visualizing the, your data um, simply because they, do, they lack the um, they lack um, depth information. Um, so you, do, you see the colors, but you cannot visualize it any depth. So um, I wouldn't recommend you using any of the uh, the wireframe um, charts, but um, you can use a 3D surface which we have seen here, and uh, we can also use the contour charts. Um, we would we would start with a we we'll start with a with a contour charts. Okay. So and to better see this, let's go to our folder and open the the image as it is here. We'll be switching between the Excel and the image just to to show uh, for you to visualize. Um, I mean, compare between the the image and the image data visualization. Let's close this. All right. Now, um, let's see if we can do this. All right. Um, it's probably going to be helpful. It might. Okay. All right. And I will squeeze. We we'll squeeze this um, image file image here uh, okay how about the Excel I've got a small screen but um, I hope you are able to um, see things clearly as much as possible um, if you compare this data I mean this um, chart to the image you will notice one thing that it, the chart is inverted the um, there is a small bar here which has some information. Um, this image was taken with a Bushnell camera. Um, it's a Bushnell game and trail camera and it displays um, temperature um, stamp and also time, date and time stamp. Now if you look at this um, image the representation you see that that is showing up um, rather than down. Um, Excel um, rightly um, arranges the rightly arranges the um, the pixel values so you have um, a1 here which is supposed to represent the um, the first um, uh, the first uh, pixel in in the, the left corner um, so it this corresponds to the actual location in the image However, when Excel charts, um, creates this chart, Excel uh, places the, the first point or the first um, cell at the bottom. So you, you find that the image is inverted. And um, it's straightforward, we can, we can fix this. To do this, let's first move this image representation to the left. Um, we have to quickly uh, double click on the um, um, this axis, the vertical axis here, um, and this would open this right pane. From the right pane, we have to look for um, um, the the icon that says um, axis options, so axis options, and the axis options. If it's collapsed, look for click to. I'm um, expanded and you have series in reverse order when you click on series in reverse order it arranges it in in the opposite direction so that um, a1 that is cell a1 is rightly placed on top and you have the last um, uh, cell value placed on the bottom right so now if you compare this to that we have um, the the correct orientation of the image. So this is straightforward um, 
we would be making use of this right pane so I'm not going to close it now I'll keep it open um, okay so notice here that we have um, three colors we have blue orange and gray um, blue um, is between 0 and 100 the orange is between 100 and 200 the gray is between 200 and 300 now the uh, the highest value you can get as far as these um, pixel values are concerned is 255 overall that is um, 256 because it includes 0 so you have 0 to 255 that makes it 256 um, colors alright now um, this is uh, broken down into I mean Excel automatically runs this to like 300 which we know is not uh, going to be there's not going to be any value between the 256 and 300 so anyway Excel breaks this down and um, um, appends the, the colors appropriately now we can change this um, before we before we make any changes to this first I would want to show you um, what we can do with these colors assuming we want to change these colors we do, we do not want blue um, orange and gray so if we look at the if we compare it with the image uh, we see that the orange is mostly um, the the leaves um, and this is a soybean plant um, the orange is mostly the leaves we want to change it to green okay and uh, let's say we want to change the blue to brown so maybe we think that the blue or we can see that the blue represents background which could be um, the soil and also um, other residue on the surface of the soil so click on the legend here click again to make a selection at this point you can see that the blue is selected one quick way to do this is to right click um, to right click and then um, click on this um, paint button the paint bucket sorry paint bucket um, and then make a selection change the color All right. alternatively with this selected you can also make use of the right pane um, this is effects click on fill and line and then click on fill and then you have access to the paint bucket right here you can change the colors here um, as a shortcut I would rather make use of the uh, the right clicking right click um, click on the paint bucket and you have access to this let's make this brown uh, would this be the best brown or would that be this gold accent I choose that one to represent our background as um, I see this okay and um, then I want to change the um, 100 to 200 into green do the same thing select my green would this green be or that green let me choose this green and let's see okay so it applies it and then we have this to be green and the gray um, actually represents um, it will represent the, the data um, the high um, values and um, let's say we want to make this yellow okay and so let's see if there is any yellow in there well so the gray is basically coming from the bar down here and which we can go down to either delete the range of um, values that um, that make up this uh, this bar um, the rows that make up this bar either delete it or um, change the uh, the visualization of uh, the selection so that it does not include that because that is only additional we do not want that to influence our visualization most likely the images you will deal with will not have 
um, this problem. But just recognize that that is um, what is contributing to the data on the high side. All right. So we have seen how to change the colors. Um, now let's look at, um, in this case, we have three range of colors. Now, um, this might not be sufficient to show the differences um, in, in the features. Okay. So let's say we want to um, improve the, the resolution by um, reducing the range or uh, the narrow ranges to a smaller value and we want to um, have more colors so that we can uh, we can have um, more detailed um, information from this image. How can we do this? I mean, this is where the other um, visualization, which is the um, the 3D surface, comes becomes um, very useful. So, as you go on, we move forward. You have to. Um, become familiar with the uh, with the um, the need to change between the 2D and the 3D the 2D contour and the 3D uh, depending on what you want to do but eventually um, in the final representation we would be more interested in the 2D all right so for us to go back to the um, 3D um, we don't need to go to insert again we already have this file this the um, chart created uh, what you do is um, from any where you would with this click um, or with this selected uh, click on design you have chart tool design and format click on design and then um, select um, change chart type to open a similar um, dialog box so this time we want to change it to the 3D surface. Okay. So change it to 3D surface and here is your representation. Okay. Now um, we can we could have removed this but never mind. So this uh, representation is uh, what we have the here is a series which we saw in the two dimension that is this this um, dimension the um, rows is or the columns sorry is this dimension the horizontal dimension and these uh, peaks and valleys uh, represent the actual pace of values so um, the well, the higher the value the higher would be the peak the lower the value the lower will be the peak so this creates some peaks and value and valleys in here and the colors are associated with these peaks and valleys so any any peak that it falls within I mean up to this point would have from that's from zero to that one hundred would have the this color assigned to it. Anything that falls between this um, one hundred to two hundred will have the green color assigned to it. And anything that falls um, above that two hundred would have the yellow color assigned to it. As you can see over here, uh, mostly it is the um, the bar here. All right. So let's say instead of um, having three. First and foremost, we want to reduce this from um, two uh, from three hundred. We want to make it two two fifty. Okay, as yes, we want to make it two fifty because we find two fifty to be the most appropriate. The find the actual um, value would be two five five, but uh, we can we can keep it two five five or make it two fifty, whichever. We can select. To do this, um, click on the vertical axis. If we did not have the right pane already open, they would have to double click it to open it. With that selected, click on the um, axis option. Um, look for this, um, um, how do you call it? This um, histogram 
or this bar chart icon click on that one and expand the access option um, we have minimum minimum represents the lowest value you have on your vertical axis maximum represents the highest value and then um, units we have major and minor we we'll forget about the minor and focus on the major the major unit is your range your small your major um, divisions so 300 divided by 100 gives us three three different colors if we want to have um, four colors okay first and foremost let's say we want this to be 250 all right so if we want this to be 250 I uh, would have we have to change this to 250 and once we we have um, entered the value we can click outside in any other folder and this auto will change to reset how uh, many any field that shows reset means that you have actually touched it you have touched it in the sense that you have um, changed um, you have uh, modified the default value okay so means that the minimum value has not been touched it is auto if you want to keep it fixed at zero what I would do would be to add another zero to it I mean so we've added nothing but in actual fact because we've added that zero when we click outside it becomes reset because we have modified it it comes back to zero but we have modified it and that is exactly what we will do to the rest you will notice that the when we change this to 250 the number of colors also changed and um, this major value um, automatically moved from 100 to 50 um, this is Excel doing its own thing Excel is in charge because we have not fixed it by uh, modifying it so assuming we we wanted to change it to 5 so actually it has done what we want it to do but um, sometimes when you switch back to the 2d um, visualization um, this is going to excel it will switch it back to maybe 100 or change it to some other value but we do not want that to happen we actually came into the 3d view in order to set this um, to be what we want it to be so um, let's work on this and, and make it fixed uh, we would make it fixed by adding a zero to it and um, tell Excel that we have we made a change not Excel all right so see auto will change to reset and that means that this becomes fixed so now we can go back to the two-dimensional view to see what it um, the what changes um, have occurred to do this we have the chart selected um, under design so uh, go back to uh, change chart type click on that and then we'll go back to the uh, contour now the, the range that we changed we couldn't have done that if we had remained in contour view or in the contour chart so that is why it becomes necessary to switch between the uh, the two-dimensional which is a contour chart and then the three-dimensional which is a, a 3d surface chart so here we go we have um, this looks more detailed we have zero, uh, zero to 50 uh, we have um, 50 to 100 and we can see 5200 actually represent some leaves now we see that um, 100 to 150 still represents some leaves but we have made it some other value um, let's change this to another shade of green instead of yellow let's change it to some other shade of green so let's say we use um, this light green this light green and see what what it turns out to be okay we've improved the visualization 
and we see the orange that is um, 150 to 200 is still uh, um, part of the leaves so let's see we can we make it lighter can we make it lighter let's choose this green there we go there we go so we have improved the visualization it's much closer to what we um, we we think it is or what we can see it to be and then with the other high values that are blue that is blue and that would also affect the the bar the writing in here so we can leave this uh, blue or maybe change that to yellow now change that one to yellow so we are in control now not excel <laughs> anyway so once we have done this oh, that i had selected it all right so we we have the image close to what we we want it to be or close to what we can see however if you look closely at this you realize that um some areas are not very um fine um meaning that the, uh, um some leaves I mean, mostly the leaves appear to be leaves but there are some um, areas that are not very clear you would have some background um, also appearing as green um, just because of the um, the way it the, the response the spectral response in the red band um, later we'll talk about how to um, process the data so that so that we can obtain um, better data or enhanced data that will show clear distinctions between um, foregrounds and and uh, backgrounds and also can show distinctions between um, different features that are in the um, within the image scene so here we have um, uh, modified the colors to get better representation of our of our image data and we have also um, change the um, increased yes yeah, change the colors and also increase the number of colors um, what else can we do here um, this is briefly what we can do with it with the two-dimensional um, we can can do some other things to it I mean this would be when we have um, we have done further processing but at this point this all we can do um, visualize the image data and then change the, um, the some of the settings to um, get a better visualization in the green band data you can also do similar in the blue band we can also do similar because they are all two-dimensional now um, in the UC data actually the um, UC stands for classified sorry unsupervised classification which you, we will talk about and you will know later know why um, that was used um, for the that was I we later know why I I use that to represent this data because we can use that to work towards the uh, unsupervised classification which we'll talk about um, mm -hmm. Remember that in the previous video, um, I mentioned that um, I made reference to the fact that number two here or row two is the the A one value A one uh, cell A one pixel values for the red, green, and blue. And these zeros are put there by default. Um, let's change the them to be the actual um, day. Um, how do you call it to be to correspond to the um, the worksheets they are coming from thank you okay so here we have red green and blue 
let me maximize because at this point we have done comparison comparing the two um, with the image and the visualization so here there are a number of things that we can do um, a simple one would be to see a scatter plot between the red and, and green and this we can do by selecting um, both of these and then going to insert and uh, under insert you click on the see all charts and here we have some recommended charts but let's go to all charts and then we can see we want the scatter chart okay so this scatter chart um, is sufficient to at this point to tell us um, a correlation between the red this would be the red band on the vet on the horizontal axis that's the x-axis and the green band data on the y-axis um, we can maybe for a better visualization here um, click on that one and come to the pane here um, you select the fill and um, line and then select marker and a marker we have um, marker options um, it sets it gives us the marker um, sh um, what do you call it um, type by default we can we can keep to it we can also click on the built-in here we have the type and the size we can reduce the size so that we can we can uh, better view our data this is not showing very clearly if we enlarge the um, this we think the output would be better okay here uh, we can also go ahead and change the type of marker uh, usually would go with uh, maybe either cross um, either cross or um, a times <laughs> a plus or a times um, anyway so it so happens that this is still not showing very clearly but uh, basically it's just uh, you see these are the, it's just a scatter you have um, one value red on the x-axis and the corresponding um, green on the y-axis we can also uh, compare between red and uh, sorry I'm trying to use some shortcuts here so select the whole the chart and then drag um, one of the selections to the next so this shows this is um, red and blue okay and then we can also um, see between uh, blue and green and blue come on I think it's done so this is green green and blue and this is um, okay this is um, red and blue and this is um, yeah and this is um, red and um, green okay this is a, this is a simple simple representation um, later we we can we'll talk about how to use combine these to obtain um, uh, uh, what do you call it uh, new data in other uh, columns and then uh, compare those uh, new data one more thing we can do um, I think well let me show you this because this is still coming um, and this is this other one I'm going to talk to you about is um, visualizing the data as histogram um, that 
the histogram will show you the distribution of the uh, pixel values um, in the image. To do that, we need um, to click select data here and we need um, data analysis. Um, data analysis um, is um, a tool, um, an add-on or add-in tool that um, enables us to do um, some statistical analysis um, on our data. Um, the add-in tool is not there by default, but we can we can call it, we can add it in. To do that, go to File, and then go to Options. In Options, click on Add-ins, and uh, this is what we are looking for. Uh, we are looking for, yeah, Excel Add-ins here. Click on Go. Yes, it's called the Analysis Tool Pack. That's what we are going to add, Analysis Tool Pack. That's the first one in the list. Check it, click OK. And there it is, Data Analysis. I hope it, it starts for us because in some uh, versions um, after adding, we had to restart, I mean, restart Excel for it to to show anyway let's see okay right there so in this one uh, to do this we need um, histogram we are looking for it for the histogram and it, as you can see it can we can use that to perform different analysis click on histogram and then click OK now Histogram is the histogram is going to ask you for input, um, input range, and then uh, the bin is going to be the the values that you are going to the values that you are going to count. Basically, the histogram is going to provide counts of um, either individual values or ranges of values. Um, the bin is going to be that the, those single values that you are interested in and we can add a label we can either um, see the output on a on the, I mean within the same worksheet or we can also select new worksheet to apply we can select it or create a new work, workbook all together to have our output for our purpose we would need to use the um, output range which we would select um, in here where they um, in, uh, in performing the histogram the uh, Excel needs to uh, pro, um, create some data from that uh, histogram place it there and then use that summary to um, create your um, uh, visualization let's see Let's let's create our own bin range. Okay. Let's create our own bin range and we would call that um let's see well let's make let's just make it pixel. Call it pixel. And this we want to count every each individual pixel value. And remember I said is from 0 to 255 so we in to, in total that makes it uh, 256 let's start filling it up so 0 this is um, 1 2 and then we can continue by just dragging here we are looking for 256 to 156. Oh, come on, you've gone too far. 256. All right, so that, that would be our bin. Now, 
Our output range, let's pull this one here. Our output range, um, oh, let's see if we can just put our bin here. Our output range will make it, uh, will make it J, okay? I'll make it K, let's make it K. So our bin would be I, and then our output range will be K. All right, so let's go back to data and in data analysis. Now we have set up right histogram. Okay, our input range is going to be, um, we have labels of the input range. So let's keep labels active. Our input range would be this. You can either um, click on the the uh, the heading or the or the column, or you can also just select everything, you know, by clicking and dragging. But um, to let Excel do some of the things, I have clicked just the heading, so I picked the whole um, column. But Excel would determine where the, the actual um, last uh, the last cell which contains some data bin range we can click on this to select our bin range uh, again that is also that also has um, a, a heading all right that's our bin range and then uh, output range let's click here and click OK so it says the pixel and a frequency so pixel is uh, coming from the uh, the bin we have created and then the frequency is the, the count of uh, we made a mistake we let some things out. Let's select and delete. Okay. And it will do this again. Delete. All right. Go back to data, data analysis, histogram. Okay. Now we would use the same selections, only that this time we want to see the um, chart output. We want to see cumulative percentage and um, this is sorted histogram we are not looking for that one here we want to see the cumulative percentage or maybe that's probably not very important um, we want to see the chart output let's click OK with it. every other thing being correct OK all right <laughs> Here is our histogram. It shows us the pixel value, the frequency, and the percentage. Um, uh, what do you call it? Percentage, uh, cumulative percentage. So it keeps adding up until it reaches 100. Uh, maybe this is not going to help us a lot because we want to see how this is. Let's see if we can open it up. Mm, not so useful. All right. Let's delete it and um, we'll do it again. This time we will not include the, uh, we will not include the um, cumulative because we don't need it in this particular application. Let's keep everything together uh, minus the cumulative and just have a chart output and click OK. All right, there we go. Here's our histogram. Let's delete this. It's just frequency. It doesn't give us a lot, whole lot of information. Okay, it's probably... All right. I don't know, can you see? I'm sure you can see. So this shows you the distribution of the pixel values in the red band. Okay, you can see it very clearly here. Um, and it's happening because um, we have 
um, a lot of count or a big frequency here and this high frequency is coming because of the white area here which is white um, actually um, is the highest um, they would give you the the highest pixel value so all this is contributing to a high value here and we have a small range we can do one thing okay we know that for from this particular image we know that it's not um, useful uh, we can go down here and delete just for our purposes we would remove this 255 and delete it to make it zero okay so that we can have a better visualization of our mm -hmm. all right so that is gone and we know this is actually coming from the rest of the image so this is how your the pixel values are distributed and we can only we could only um achieve this by having um data that is in two that, that is in one dimension um like we do have over here so this will give you an idea or um, give you an appreciation why um i have included the data um i have also what why I have included the UC data, which is uh, the one-dimensional forms of the RGB data. All right. I think this should be sufficient for our visualization. Um, in this video, we have we started uh, from the red um, band, looking at the, the two-dimensional data, and, and that is similar to the green band and the blue band and uh, we looked at how to visualize the image data um, how to visualize the image data uh, we have used um, contour which is what is this is showing and then also um, 3d surface and we have switched between the contour and 3d surface to um, to change the the range of colors okay there are the range of values and also we have looked at how to change the colors in this um, how to change the colors in in the image so that we can have a better representation of what we are looking at and then finally i have talked also shown you how to visualize the um, the data the one dimensional data that is the uc data um, looking at um, different um, correlation or regression um, of the one um, let's see in this case we have green on red and we have also looked at um, green on um, not blue on red so red and then blue and so forth and then we have also looked at how to obtain a histogram which gives you the count a count of the um, uh, pixel values and we can, we can do this for the raw data as we have done, or we can also do it for um, the process data as we move on forward. So um, thank you very much. And um, I, in the subsequent videos, we will be delving much into um, the real actual image uh, processing operations. Um, I think this should give you a good uh, foundation for that. Uh, I would encourage that you will spend some time to watch this video and make sure that you are uh, pretty much um, at, at, um, at par with the information and the skill set so that we can move on uh, speedily in the, um, in the subsequent videos. All right. Thank you very much and, um, um, and bye for now. Okay.